In this video, we're going to look at a version of the extended Euclidean algorithm for polynomials. So let's just recall that if we've got two polynomials f and g of x that are inside a polynomial ring over a field, so like k adjoined x, um, then we can always take a combination of those two polynomials to achieve their greatest common divisor. So we proved that earlier after we like really precisely defined the GCD of two polynomials and so on and so forth. So I'll let you guys look at those videos. So what we want to do now is find these polynomials A and B that achieve this combination to produce the greatest common divisor. And we're going to do that three different times. We're going to do it over the rationals adjoined X, we're going to do it over Z2 adjoined X, and over Z11 adjoined X. So recall that ZP is a field if and only if P is prime. So that's why I've chose 2 and 11. You might also say, well, what's so special about 2 and 11 other than they are prime? Times. Well, I was just playing around with it and it turns out that for a bunch of the small primes, you get the same answer in ZP adjoint X as you do in Q adjoint X. But for 2 and 11, you get something slightly different, so I thought that was interesting. And also, I'm going to level with you. This is not a super fun process, but maybe it's something that like builds character or something. And it is at least interesting to notice that uh, polynomials over a field look more and more like the integers. In fact, what's going on here is that polynomials over a field and the integers um, form something called a Euclidean domain, which is a special type of integral domain where you can perform this extended Euclidean algorithm. And so, in fact, it's not that polynomials over a field are like the integers, it's that polynomials over a field and the integers are both part of this bigger object. Okay, great. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to do this just the way we did with integers. That is, we're going to per perform the division algorithm over and over and over until we hit a remainder of zero. Then we're going to reverse that process in order to build these polynomials A and B as needed. So our first goal in this process is to find the quotient and remainder when dividing f by g. In other words, we want to write f of x equal to some polynomial times g of x plus some other polynomial. So this will be the quotient and this will be the remainder. Okay, and we're going to do that with polynomial long division. So we need to take g of x, which is x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1, and divide it into f of x, which is x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. And notice I've left a little hole there for my x cubed term. This is not uh, super necessary if you're careful about your bookkeeping, but it is certainly helpful. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is find out what can we multiply to x cubed to make it into x to the fourth, and that's clearly we're just going to multiply by x. Now we distribute x onto all of these terms, so that's going to give us x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 4x squared plus x. Great. Now the next thing that we want to do is group these and subtract. Okay, so by design, these leading terms are going to cancel, and then uh, we're going to be left with minus 4x cubed, then we're going to have minus 6x squared, and then minus 4x. Okay, great. And then we have to bring this minus 2 down. Okay, and now we're going to continue on this process. So what do we need to multiply by x cubed to make it into minus 4x cubed? So again, that's pretty clear. It's minus 4. And so now if we distribute this minus 4 onto all of these terms, we'll get minus 4x cubed uh, minus 16x squared minus 16x and then minus 4. Great. And then again, we're going to group these and then subtract. And by design, the leading terms cancel. Great. And then we're left in the end with, so we've got minus 6x squared minus a negative 16x squared, so that is going to be 10x squared. And then likewise, we're going to have 12x plus 2. So this guy right here is our quotient, so we can put that right here. So we have x minus 4, and this guy down here is our remainder. So we can write this as 10x um, squared 
plus 12x plus 2. And now continuing in the Euclidean algorithm, our next step will, to define, will to be to divide our g of x, which was our old divisor, by our uh, 10x squared plus 12x plus 2, which is our first remainder. Okay, so I'll clean up this bit of the board and we'll do that calculation. So like I said, the next thing that we want to do is write g of x equals something times 10x squared plus plus 12x plus 2 plus a remainder. So just as we do with the Euclidean algorithm for numbers, we're doing it for polynomials. So our old divisor becomes our new dividend, and then our old remainder becomes our new divisor. Okay, good. So let's see what it's going to take to do that. We're going to divide 10x squared plus 12x plus 2 into g of x. So let's recall g of x has this form. So it's going to be x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay. So what do we need to multiply by x 10x squared to get uh, x cubed? Well, that's pretty clear. That's going to be uh, 1 over 10 times x. So let's see what that's going to give us. That's going to give us an x cubed here. And then it'll give us 12 over 10 x squared. But notice 12 over 10 is the same thing as 6 over 5. So we have 6 over 5 x squared. And then 2 over 10 x, but that's the same thing as 1 over 5 x. And now we need to group these and subtract. So notice here the x cubed terms are going to cancel. And then we have uh, 4x squared minus 6 over 5x squared. So notice that's uh, 20 over 5 minus 6 over 5. So that's going to be uh, 14 over 5x squared. And then we have another 20 over 5 minus 1 over 5. So that's going to be uh, 19 over over 5x, then bring this 1 down, so plus 1. Now what do we multiply by 10x squared to give us uh, 14 over 5x squared? So what's going to work here is 7 over 25. So let's just make sure that works. So notice 10 over 25 is going to give us 2 over 5. Take that 2 in the numerator and multiply by 7 and that's going to give us 14. So that totally works. So distributing through, here we'll get 14 over 5x squared. And then let's see what we get for here. This is going to be 84 over 5. 12 times 7 is 84. 84 over 25 I should say. Um, good, and then here we'll get 14 over 25. And then, just like before, we need to group and subtract. So the leading terms cancel. So 19 over 5 is the same thing as 95 over 25. So 95 over 25 minus 84 over 25 is going to be 11 over 25x. Okay, and then notice that 1 is the same thing as 25 over 25, so that is going to be 11 over 25. Now notice this degree is smaller than this degree, so that means we're done, and that's our remainder. So we have quotient and new remainder. So notice this, we can write 1 over 10 um, x plus 7 over 25. That's our quotient. And then our remainder, I'll go ahead and take this 1125 out and write this as x plus 1. So now uh, the next thing we want to do is again make this old divisor into the new dividend and then this old remainder in the t into the new quotient. And actually uh, we can go ahead and fit this in um, over here because this is actually pretty easy to see. And instead of dividing by 11 over 25 x plus 1, I'm just going to divide by x plus 1. So x plus 1 divides into 10x squared plus 12x plus 2. So notice here we can just multiply by 10x. We'll get 10x squared plus 10. So if we subtract that, we'll get uh, 2x plus 2. And then notice here this is just plus 2. So uh, 
our remainder is zero. But since our remainder is zero, that means we can stop. The last non-zero remainder is always the GCD. So that makes this guy right here the GCD, which is what we wanted. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll use these two equations to do our goal, which is to write the GCD of f of x and g of x, which we just determined to be x plus one um, in its monic form uh, in terms of a combination of f of x and g of x. So on the last board, we finally determined that the GCD of f and g is x plus one. So now we can use these two equations to write x plus one as a combination of f and g. So notice the first thing that we can do is use this very first equation to write x plus one. So notice it's going to be uh, 25 over 11 times g of x. So notice I'll just multiply the whole thing by 25 over 11 to kill that. Um, in fact, I can just maybe do 25 over 11 here, 25 over 11 here, and then notice multiplying this by 25 over 11 just uh, gets rid of it. So we're good to go. So it's going to be 25 over 11 times g of x minus 25 over 11 times 1 over 10 x plus 7 over 25. Great. Um, and then also times... Uh, 10x squared plus 12x plus 2. Great. And then the next thing that we can notice is that uh, using this equation up here, we can take that 10x squared plus 12x plus 2 and rewrite that in terms of f of x and g of x as well. So notice 10x squared plus 12x plus 2 is equal to f of x minus x minus 4 times g of x. Okay, good. So let's see what we have. We have x plus 1 equals. So let's see what we have for uh, g of x. Or, so let's see what we have multiplied by g of x. So notice uh, we're going to have 25 over 11 multiplied by g of x from this term right here. And then we're going to have a minus 25 over 11 times 1 over 10x plus 7 over 25 from this term. And then a further x minus 4, but notice this thing is negative, which means we can make this sign a plus. And then all of this is multiplied by g of x. Okay, so let's see where all of those terms come from. So maybe I'll underline all of these in purple. And then we get one from here. Uh, we get one from here. And then from this bit right here. So now let's see what our coefficient of f of x is, which is actually a le little bit easier to see. So notice the coefficient of f of x is going to be 25 over 11 times 1 over 10x plus 7 over 25 times f of x. Okay, so let's see where we get that. So I'll underline this coefficient in blue. And notice uh, we can get that just from this bit right here. Okay, great. So now it might look a little bit better if we uh, multiply all of these things out and simplify, and we can definitely do that. And when we do that, we get the following formula. So we'll get 5x squared over 22 uh, minus 3x over 11 uh, minus 3 over 11 times g of x. Okay, so that's what we get for our coefficient of g of x, if you will, and then plus um, negative 5x over 22, and then minus 7 over 11 times f of x. So if you will, this would be our polynomial a of x, and this right here would be our polynomial b of x. And if you remember from what we did in integers, there are actually an infinite family of these solutions. And the way that you can do that is you can find the polynomial least common multiple of f and g and just add in um, polynomial multiples of that uh, least common multiple of f and g into this uh, solution. So 
I'm not going to do that, and I'm not going to do that because um, this is already kind of enough work, um, and I think this is illuminating enough to see that we've written the GCD of F and G as a combination of F and G. So, but here we've just done it over the rational numbers, so we still need to do it over Z2 and Z11. So let's go ahead and put a check mark here because we're good to go, and now let's move on to what's happening over Z2. So now let's see what's happening over Z2. So over Z2, we should uh, rewrite everything where we have reduced all our coefficients. So notice this is going to turn into x to the fourth, and then uh, negative two is the same thing as zero in Z2 because it's even. Negative three is the same thing as one in Z2 because it's odd. So it's x to the fourth plus x, okay. Oh, and then I should say 2 is 0 because it's even. And now let's notice that uh, g of x is equal to x cubed plus 1. Great. But the next thing to notice is that we can write f of x as x times x cubed plus 1. In other words, as x times g of x, which tells us that g of x divides f of x. In other words, the GCD of f of x and g of x is just equal to g of x itself, which is x cubed plus 1. Yeah. Okay, good. So we get another GCD um, if we're working over Z2. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at what's happening over Z11 as well. So we just determined the polynomial GCD in Z2, and it turns out that f of x and, well, g of x divided f of x, which actually makes it very, very easy to write um, f, which makes it very, very easy to write the GCD as a multiple of f and g. We can just take it to be g itself. So there's nothing really to do there. Um, now we're going to look over Z11. So uh, we're going to start back at this point, which was our calculation over Q, but we're going to reduce this mod Z11 first. So notice over Z11, 10 is the same thing as negative 1, so I'm going to make that negative x squared, and 12 is the same thing as 1, so I'm going to make that the same thing as x. So now we're going to continue performing the Euclidean algorithm. In other words, we want to divide this negative x squared plus x plus 2 into g of x. So we have negative x squared plus x plus 2 divided into g of x, which is this thing right here, x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay. So what do we need to multiply to negative x squared to turn it into x cubed? Well, that's going to be negative x. So let's see what we get when we do that. So distributing, we'll have x cubed, and then we'll have minus x squared minus 2x. Okay, so now we need to group and subtract. So let's see, that's going to give us uh, 5x squared and then plus 6x plus 1. Now, we need to maybe here multiply by negative 5, and let's see what we get when we do that. So distributing, we'll get uh, 5x squared uh, minus 5x uh, minus 10. And so now let's go ahead and group and subtract again. So notice 5 minus 5 is 0. 6x minus a negative 5x is going to be 11x. And 1 minus a negative 10 is going to be 11. But then recall that we're working in z11, so this thing is 0. So in other words, this quotient is uh, perfect. There is no remainder. So that means the last non-zero remainder is this guy right here. So that's our last non-zero remainder, which makes this thing the GCD. And since that thing right there is the GCD, we can easily write it as a linear combination of F and G just by rewriting this very first equation. So notice we can write minus X squared plus X plus 2 is equal to F of X minus X minus 4 times G of X. Great, so we've written the GCD of F and G in terms of F and G. So again, this is just one step, so it's easy to see. Okay, this is a good place to stop.